Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus who comes to us in this Eucharist. Let us call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, 
He is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. 
Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, two days before Christmas, our first reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Malachi. The prophet Malachi was the last prophet in the Old Testament. And Malachi's prophecy was followed by 400 years of silence by God. After Malachi, God did not raise up any prophet to speak for him. Sa loob ng mahabang panahon pagkatapos ni Propeta Malakias na nahimik ang Diyos, wala ng ibang propetang nangusap ng mga salita ng Diyos. And God broke His silence 400 years later when John the Baptist, whose birth we heard in our Gospel today, came. John the Baptist was the prophet prophesied by Malachi. John the Baptist was the voice that will prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah. And so those 400 years of silence by God from the time of the prophet Malachi until the coming of John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus, those long years of silence were preparations for the people of God for something great that God will do, and that is the coming of the Messiah. In our gospel today, we also heard about the silence of Zechariah, the father of John. Remember that when the angel Gabriel appeared to him in the temple and told him that his wife Elizabeth, though old and barren, would bear a son, Zechariah did not believe. And so he was struck mute by God for his misbelief, for his lack of faith. And those nine months of silence helped Zechariah to understand the mystery unfolding right before his eyes. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, when God will do something great, when God will make a breakthrough in our lives, it is always preceded by silence. We are being prepared by God in silence. For it is only in silence that we could behold the works of God. Kapag may gagawin ang Diyos na dakilang bagay sa atin, inihahanda niya tayo sa pamamagitan ng katahimikan. Dahil sa katahimikan lamang natin makikita kung paanong kumikilos ang Diyos. 
Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters, that when we are preparing a surprise for someone, we are keeping it a secret. We want to be quiet about it. We want as few people to know it as possible. Kapag meron tayong gustong isurpresa, itinatahimik din natin para hindi mabuko ang surpresa. Para yung surpresa ay manatiling surpresa. The same is true with God. When God will do something great, He wants us to prepare for it in secret so that in silence, we will appreciate God's mighty and marvelous works. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, silence is an important element of Christmas. We could not really celebrate Christmas if we are noisy externally and internally because the first Christmas happened in utter silence. Noong isinilang si Jesus, isinilang siya sa isang tahimik at madilim na gabi. And so if we want to recover the true essence of Christmas, we must relearn to appreciate silence. My dear brothers and sisters, do we still appreciate silence? Do we still value silence? Or have we been so used to noise that we are already uneasy when it is silent? Mas sanay na ba tayo sa ingay kaya hindi na tayo komportable sa katahimikan? Pag tahimik, hindi tayo mapakali. Kaya gusto natin maingay. But Christmas is a celebration that could only be appreciated in silence. And so I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, I even challenge you that on Christmas Day, Amidst all the festivities, celebrations, partying that we will do, could we spend some moments of silence, just being silent before Jesus or before the manger of Jesus, before the Belen? Tumahimik lang tayo ng ilang sandali, ng walang ginagawa, walang kinakausap, hindi titingin sa cellphone, walang pakikinggang iba, walang iisipin, walang sasabihin. Tatahimik lang sa harapan ng dakilang misteryo ng pagkakatawang tao ng Diyos. If we could do that, then we will experience what Christmas is really all about. In silence, God speaks. In silence, God makes His self present and felt. In silence, we will see the meaning of Christmas. And in silence, we will see the surprise of God. Please all stand. Zechariah called his son John, which means God is gracious. Trusting in God's graciousness and generosity, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church and government leaders may truly show God's graciousness by their loving and persevering service to God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that we may appreciate our Christian name and dignity and live up to our baptismal promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families may renew their love, solidarity, and support for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and consolation from the prayers and encouragement of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may finally enter the home of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord God, may the life of John the Baptist inspire us to greater holiness. Fill us with the Spirit as we work in the service of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.